It's been inevitable for a couple of presented by Progressive Insurance and all guests appear via the Goodyear hotline. It is Chris Carlin and Courtney Cronin in for Greeny today. And Courtney, this did just seem inevitable. And frankly, it has seemed for a few weeks that the Jaguars had to move on from Urban Meyer. It certainly felt like there were portions of them that really wanted to move on from the organization that they had seen more than enough. And here we are. He is out after just 13 weeks, one of the most successful college coaches of all time, not getting it done in the NFL primarily because he created so many stupid dramas himself through narcissism. I mean, we've talked about the last week or so, this was all boiling over and coming to a head and that eventually Shad Khan was going to have to do something. But this goes back to the time he was hired, Chris. Think about misstep after misstep, going back to when he hired Chris Doyle, the disgraced strength and conditioning coach from Iowa. The guy resigns a day later. Then there's all of the stuff during OTAs. They get fined because they have two intense practices. They lose OTAs for the next season. The the bar incident back after he didn't fly back with his team after the loss to the Cincinnati Bengals. Has he did he do one positive thing in Jacksonville? Like when we look back at Urban Meyer's time, will there be one singular thing that we can pull out and say, Hey, he didn't screw this up? Honestly, I can't think of anything right now. I don't know if you can off the top of your head because it's been marred by such chaos and such calamity since the moment he he stepped foot on on the, into the facility in Jacksonville back in you know nine months ago. But the only thing you can say is that he drafted Trevor Lawrence, and you can't even give him credit for that because anybody the most would obvious have drafted thing Trevor to do. Lawrence. <laughs> exactly. I mean, think about. When everybody was, you know, making a big stink about, oh, man, he shouldn't go to the Jets. He should go anywhere else but that. That's going to ruin his career. Do you really think Trevor Lawrence started his career off on the right foot with the Jacksonville Jaguars? I mean, my goodness. Everything that he said yesterday when he's talking about, hey, there's too much drama around this team. Of course, college football teams have drama. NFL teams have drama. But do you think that that sparked a little bit more uh, urgency in Shad Khan's mind to maybe try to right the ship? When your oh. franchise quarterback is unhappy, certainly feels like it. I totally agree. Uh, I totally agree. And that was the only reason he should make the decision. It's hard to believe this was Urban Meyer not all that long ago at his introductory press conference. I'm older. I have something I'm going to be very conscientious of. It's something I'm going to watch very closely. I will be in the head coach, but I'm going to hire great coaches that are going to be expected to do their job. I'm not going to be running around like a nut on the practice field and I know what it's supposed to look like, and I want to be very demanding of everyone. You know, I had that surgery in 2014 that really helped things, but uh, it's just something I watch very closely. I'm not going to run around like a nut on the practice field. He kicked his kicker. He kicked his kicker on the practice field and said, hey, blank, make your kicks. Uh, college football, Courtney, in so many ways when it comes to coaches, really is guilty of turning, of turning head coaches into demagogues in their respective towns. And that's what happened with Urban Meyer. So many of these coaches believed their own hype for the longest time. And even leaving in disgrace, as he did from Ohio State, has this feel to it of, well, they still won titles with him. They still had a ridiculous record with him. It's almost like in his own mind, that, that never happened. It never, it all got washed away. And what you saw this year, you talk about hiring the right coaches. He's pointing around the room, calling his coaches losers. What have you ever won? You hired them, brother. You hired them. It has to, at some point, be your fault. Yeah, I mean, the hubris. Like, mm. my goodness, the, the, the thought that you could come in, and this is my problem with NFL coaches who – get head coaching jobs and have never coached a day in the NFL. You don't understand what it takes. Not even being, you know, when you think about coaches who go so quickly from being a coordinator in the NFL, defensive or offensive, like a Brandon Staley, for example, there were a lot of people who thought he was going to fail in his first couple of years as the Chargers head coach. Well, at least he had NFL experience before taking a head coaching job. Like, you just cannot make that jump as successfully as it seems on paper. Like, I won in college. I should be able to win in the NFL. It is completely different. You are dealing with grown men. You are dealing with adults who 
the shtick that you that you used in college doesn't work on people who make millions of dollars to do their jobs just like you do. You have equals effectively at that point. You, technically, you have people who run the show more than you do with a franchise quarterback and somebody who you spent a number one overall draft pick on in Trevor Lawrence. Has a lot more power at the end of the day than an Urban Meyer. And I think people like Urban Meyer have trouble with that. When you have been the king, the god, everywhere you have been, and you left your last two places in disgrace with Florida and the situation that he left there with like legitimate criminals that he recruited, that he had on his football team, and then think about what he left at Ohio State with the entire situation with domestic violence with one of his assistants, and then all of a sudden he thinks that that stuff doesn't matter anymore and that his legacy is not going to be tarnished no matter what he does. Like, this was anybody with a brain could have figured out that Urban Meyer was going to fail in the NFL because of the way that he failed at his last two stops. He wins aside. The legacy that he left at Ohio State, the way he left on the way out there, the way he left on the way out at Florida, I think that that was 100% an indicator that this wasn't going to exactly go smoothly because this is somebody, when he hits a bump of turbulence, everything collapses. This is Straight Talk brought to you by Straight Talk Wireless. The, the other part here is, yet again, another college coach with that inflated sense of self coming into the league and not understanding that it is completely different than in college. That it is it is not being a CEO type situation. It's coaching football, and that's it. And it's funny. I, I kind of think back to uh, preseason during Hard Knocks when the Cowboys were playing the Jaguars and they had Mike McCarthy mic'd up, and he's talking to Urban Meyer before the game, and uh, you know he says, "How how are you adapting to it so far?" He's like, uh, it, "It's good. It, it's just coaching football." Yeah. And it's treating guys like adults, and it's uh, not walking around and acting as if everything you do will control their ultimate destiny as players, like the, like it possibly could have in college. Less so now when he, than when he was there, but he certainly had that ability to control whether or not a player had a future playing football. I think he liked that control, too. I agree. Where it was just like it's a power trip that I determine your fate. You must, you know, basically surrender all your power to me. And when you have complete control over your entire staff and over your entire, honestly, over the entire university, was there anybody more powerful at Ohio State? No. Than the head football coach, current or former? No, there's not. So when you go to a place that is a bottom-tier franchise of the NFL anyways, you don't yield that same sort of – swagger when you walk in like you know come hear me roar everything i say has to you know stop everybody dead in their tracks and you have to listen to me it just doesn't work that way the only people who really have that sort of staying power are the coaches who have won consistently in the nfl like a bill belichick i mean that's pretty much the only one that comes to the top of my mind because everybody else is vulnerable to the point where urban meyer walked in thinking I'm not going to be like the rest of them. And where did he get the sort of arrogance, the sort of belief that he could somehow not be subjected to the same sort of criticism, the same the things that people in the past, other college football coaches trying to make the jump to the NFL, have failed with? Like, if you're trying to compete with Nick Saban and do the one thing that he never did, which would be successful in the NFL, you know, good luck to you because he's probably the only one that was within that same sort of, same sort of stratosphere. Winning in, at the college football level and trying to do it in the NFL and do what Saban never did. And at least Saban lasted a few more seasons <laughs> and a few more games than Urban Meyer in Jacksonville. This is Straight Talk brought to you by Straight Talk Wireless. No contract, no compromise. We are just getting started. There was one exceptionally positive thing that actually came out of this whole situation yesterday. You'll hear that in just moments. Plus, what does the future hold for Urban Meyer? Is his professional career over and... What does this mean for Trevor Lawrence? We go down to Jacksonville and get the inside scoop. It is all on the way. Be a part of Greeny Nation on the Dr. Pepper call-in line. ESPN Nation is presented by Dr. Pepper. College football is heating up. Fans are hyped. Return to glory with fans filled by Dr. Pepper. The one fans deserve. It's Chris Carlin, Courtney Cronin in for Greeny. So, what was the exceptionally positive thing that came out of yesterday in Jacksonville? You'll hear it next on ESPN Radio and 